So let me do my best to reproduce this very nice image in the book. So we have a parabola here. And we have another parabola here. And this is, they say, minus 3, 3. Zero, zero, and the claim is these are x equals y squared minus 4y, and x equals 2y minus y squared. We don't even have to do much work here as far as making it look like this is a function x, a function of y. So clearly, we want to find the area here. Right? So we want to go from y0 to y3. Right? Or, you, know, you just have to kind of, in your mind, push this 90 degrees. And now, uh, I don't really care which of these is which. Of these is which. We're, we're integrating this way, right? So it's just the difference in these curves, right? So y squared minus 4y minus 2y minus y squared. My absolute value signs mean we don't really need to know what it is higher up because it will turn out the same. So what is this? y squared minus 6y, dy six here, y. And that's pretty simple, right? That's uh, 2y cubed over 3 minus 3y squared, 0 to 3. 18 minus 27 minus 0 minus 0. So that's going to be 9. Oh. I've gotten lazy. And I like to, uh, I like to check my work with my calculator now. symmetric to switch them around if you want to or need to or if it's just convenient to do so. It doesn't change the meaning of area. So, okay. Other questions on homework? Yeah. Uh, see, it's from one of the older homeworks. Um, That's fine. Can you do number 8 on page 393? 
use substitution to evaluate the integral. Use the substitution u equals secant of x to evaluate the integral. Okay, that's the one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Integral of tangent to the fifth secant cubed. Well, you say never look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, so, so du is equal to root of secant secant tan secant x tan x secant tangent right. So we certainly want to break this up into tangent to the fourth secant squared secant tangent yes, right? Because now this becomes du. Here because they say you substitute in the same stop there. I mean, I could, I could say, all right, this is u squared. This is just, I think this will work. And now I want to look at tangent to the fourth. Well, if u equals secant of x, then u equals 1 over cosine of x, right? Well, tan squared is equal to secant squared minus, I mean, 1 minus secant squared. Yeah, I, I, that's the other direction. I, I think the reason I feel compelled to avoid doing that, I know it'll work, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a prisoner to their instructions. So use substitution. They can say use trig substitution, right? Saying u equals secant of x. So we will probably end up going down that road. But I just want to see if if I'm if I get really neurotic about this. And just like, all right. So cosine of x equals one over u. So sine of x equals square root of one minus. over u squared. So the tangent is uh, square root of 1 minus 1 over u squared over 1 over u. u. So we have that's u times the square root of 1 minus 1 over u squared, or the square root of u squared minus 1. That's what a tangent is. So tangent to the fourth would be u squared minus one squared, which I have a feeling is exactly what I would have gotten if I did your substitution. Andy. Does that sound right? Okay. Feel compelled to find out. <coughs> so tangent squared equals 1 plus secant squared. Is that right? No, no. Tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. Is that right? Uh, in the midst of about to make a terrible mistake, I'll verify. Yeah, that's right. Cosine squared over cosine squared minus one. So okay, so 
tangent squared equals 1 equals secant squared minus 1. And so uh, if I plug in for tangent squared, it's 2 squared minus 1. Oh, look at that. It comes out the same. Did all that work for no reason at all. Okay, from here on in, I think it's I think it's pretty straightforward. This is u to the fourth minus two u squared minus one times u squared. So it's remember all of u to the sixth minus two u to the fourth minus u squared to u. Or u to the seventh over seven minus two u to the fifth over five minus u to the three. <coughs> oh. Is this a definite interval? I forget. No, it's not indefinite. So now we only have to do is plug back in secant x to the seventh over seven minus two secant x to the fifth, five minus secant. About to run out of room on the board, but that's it. Does that sound cool? Plus C. Does that help? Or did I answer the question like yeah. five minutes ago? No, that's good. It would be yeah, something edges. easier if they didn't say you have to be substitution. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you probably would have found your way to the same place. They were just trying to be helpful. This is a really good substitution, right? Makes everything happen. Okay, other questions? Yes? I'm sorry? 34. 34 on page. 436, 436. And I'm sorry, uh, number 34. 34. On 438, find the area enclosed by the curve x equal t squared minus 2t, y equals square t. Is that it? Did I sign that? <laughs> I never remember. <laughs> Where did I? So, Brandon isn't here and Christina aren't here. Yet. Uh, Alright. Can I erase the board? May I erase the board?
true regardless of what G and F mean. But in this particular case, we want to be clear that uh, X is what? X is G of T, which we just happen to know is T squared minus 2T. Y is little f of t, which is the square root of t. So we want to know when it says enclosed by, we want to know what that means. We need to know what this looks like. So again, I'm going to put my calculator into parameter mode, get a feel for this. You could work it out, you know, on board, but I mean, I, I don't see any, any point in making this harder than it has to be. T squared, t squared minus 2t and square root of t. Getting something that looks like this. It doesn't look like it's being enclosed at all. Let's see, did I type these along? T squared minus 2t, square root of t. the person who was going to say, and by the x-axis, okay, so what this looks like in this reverse manner, I guess we can turn it sideways, right? It 
seems like it would be easiest this do it this way. Um, okay. So let's ask this question. Uh, where is y zero? I mean, where is this function zero? So it's going to be plus or minus the square root of 2. So that's what those are. Uh, Because they gave me a parametric equation, I feel compelled to do it the parametric way. But it would be really easy to just integrate this way, wouldn't it? In fact, it's even easier. I can see this is uh, in this direction, it's turned sideways. It's an even function, so it's just twice this distance, it's twice, twice this area. Well, let's do that to find out what the right answer is. Right. So we're integrating dy from, let's say, 2 times 0 to the square root of 2 of y to the fourth minus 2y squared. And then we can go back and see if the other way works. Did we do this earlier? Did we do this before class? Uh, it was the one after that. Boy, the numbers look so similar, don't they? Mm -hmm. Square root of 2 to the fifth over 5 minus 2 square root of 2 cubed over 3, and then the rest is 0. So this is. 4 square root of 2 over 5 minus 4 square root of 2 over 3. Well, obviously I've got the area reversed. These would be switched. Oh, and I forgot my 2 here. I need a 2 here. So 2 squared 2 times 4 thirds minus 4 fifths is 8 fifteenths or 16 squared 3 over 15. Oh boy. <coughs> Somehow I got a square root of 3 in there, I guess. I'm brain fart. Let's see if that's right. Before I go on. Uh, so my function is. No, it's already in there. So I want to calculate from. 
0 to square root of 2. And multiply that by 2. And it comes out to be about 1.5085. What is 16 over 15 times the square root of 2? The same number. Yay! Okay, so that's the answer, but it still leaves me wondering if I shouldn't have taken this other route. So the question then is, what do I want to integrate? I know I want to integrate already from, I'm just going to do half of it, right? I know I want to integrate from 0 to square root of 2. So I want to know what these uh, limits are. So if t squared minus 2t is equal to 0, then t, t minus 2 so it yeah, is 0, 2. I'm confused by that, but that's okay. So this is 0 or 2. Maybe doing the other one will help. But if t squared minus 2t is equal to the square root of t, that seems really ugly, doesn't it? Curious if that's even going to work. Let's just stick with zero here and one plus two plus two. I'm sure that if I've made an obvious error, you all guys are all watching carefully and won't caught me on it, right? That's if you have any idea what I'm doing here. All right. So f of g of t is square root of t. G prime is 2t minus 2, 0 to this awful looking number, t. All right, so this is 2 to the 2t to the, ah, take that 2 right out of there. It's 2 t to the 3, well, I'm not going to do that yet. The 3 halves minus t to the 1 half. So 2 t to the 5 halves over 5 halves minus t to the 3 halves over 3 halves. 0 to that crazy number. Yeah. 
graphs. If that turns out right, then you can shoot me because I shouldn't have given such a crazy problem. I actually, uh, you know, in life everybody does some shortcuts, hopefully reasonable ones. Uh, like, for example, an unreasonable one would be instead of doing your homework, copying your friends. It's not going to work. But my shortcut was uh, I, I, I took a list of problems from another teacher and said, okay, I'll give you these without actually doing them. All right. I'm actually going to actually have to do this, huh? Okay, so let's first have what find out what 1 plus square root of 2 plus square root of 2 is. 2.8477. So I raise that divided by 2. Make that. Multiply that by 2, multiply that by 5, and I get 2 times 5.4767. So now I repeat all that. 1 plus square root of 2 plus square root of 2. I still get. So I have to raise that to divide by 2, multiply by 2, divide by 3, I get 2. Oh, I can see this is going nowhere even remotely in the right direction. It's 816. Well, I guess I can't put a problem like that on the midterm, can I? No. I'll, I'll, I'm not going to waste your time here. I you could spend the whole class trying to figure this out. I will. Let me again which number this is. This is page 438. Number what? 34? 34. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to go <coughs> figure out what the heck. Can we also go over number 9? Of course. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't know more of the problem. That's all right. On page 436? Uh, 430, um, 437. Yeah. Number 9. Oh, just kidding. 436. Okay. Sketch the region. Decide whether to integrate, integrate with respect to x or y. Draw a typical approximating rectangle and label its height width and find the area of the region. Man, I see. I didn't see that. I don't really approximating rectangle. It was. Use your calculator. This is this is. You know, sometimes things, most things in math change really slow. Like if, for example, you were to uh, go back and read Euclid's. Uh, Treatise on geometry, and you compare it with your modern day high school geometry book, it's very little difference. But this stuff, this has changed. And I don't know why I would do a an approximating rectangle anymore when I have a little box that will do it for me. Okay, x equals 1 minus y squared. And x equals x squared minus 1. Well, you could use your calculator and try and graph this. But, uh, do you have to change it in terms of y? Or hmm? Do you have to change it in terms of y if you wanted to use your calculator? Or is there a way that you could do x equals? Well, you could do calculator. that. I think the simplest way is to just turn your head sideways. Alright, so 
here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis. So x equals 1, 1 minus y squared. And here's x, y squared minus 1. Okay, now, because I did it sideways, now I can just switch x and y. Right? That's kind of a hand wave. But. Does anyone have a problem with what I just did there? You still didn't switch to x and y. I didn't? Oh. So uh, let's just uh, see where, where this is. All right, how are we going to do that? Well, we can just set these equal. So minus x squared equals x squared minus 1. That's 2x squared equals 2, or x equals plus or minus 1.
Yes, that's correct. Okay, so we've got to get the right one, because if we get the wrong one, we're going we're gonna to calculate, you know, like this whole thing. Or we could be stupid and do both and just take the smaller. I'm just having trouble thinking upside down. Um, I think it's this one. So it's that one. Not one. Oh my. That's right, I am I'm going along X, aren't I? I've got a Y in there. I don't want a Y in there, do I? So I decided it was this one, so I have to Wait, solve for X. For the original equations, did you mean X equals 1 minus Y squared? And X equals Y squared? I'm sorry, what? The original equation is x equals 1 minus y squared, not the other. Yes. Yeah, Which number again? 9. One minus y squared. But y equals one minus squared one minus x. Yeah, that's actually. So why don't we integrate it over one? Well, we could. <laughs> What's the whole original question? Which way should, should we do it? Should we do it this way or this way? And I really think you should do it this way. I think it's much more straightforward. But since someone suggested we do it this way, I felt compelled, right? And, and then I'm using the fact that this whole thing is symmetric, so it's just this piece. And how does this turn out? How does this turn out? Uh, 1 minus x. So it's going to be negative 1 minus x to the 3 halves over 3 halves from 0 to 1, and don't forget the 4. And what's that? It's 0, 4 times 0, minus a minus, which is going to be a plus, 1 over 3 halves, which is 4 times 2 over 3, which is 8 thirds. Okay, so I thought, I think that's crazy. I want to integrate from minus 1 to 1 dy right in the y direction. And uh, it's the difference between those two curves. Now, suspend my thinking here. So, uh, one minus y squared minus y squared minus one. which is negative 1 to 1, <coughs> 2 minus 2y squared, All right. take out the 2,
2 times 2 thirds minus a minus <coughs> let me try that again minus negative 2 minus too many minuses here comes plus one third <coughs> oh, I did something wrong one. well okay four thirds eight thirds I think that this makes much more sense Term, at least in terms of what we've been doing. You kind of turn it sideways, and it's just the difference between these two uh, curves. You guys must be having a terribly hard day, because my day is just not, not, not going well at all. Hmm. What are we doing here? Find the number B such that the line Y equals B divides the region bounded by the curves Y equals X squared and Y equals 4 So there's two ways to look at it. The hard way is to figure out what this area is, in terms of B, and this area, and equate them. I think it's much easier to just look at the whole area, and then make this area half of that. So let's do that. So to get the whole area, we want the integral from 0 to well, if y is 4, clearly x is 2. Is it 4 minus x squared? Hmm? Is it, would it be 4 <coughs> minus x squared dx? Okay, so this point here, right, is what? So y is 4. So y equals x squared. Oh, so 4 equals x squared, so y equals 2. I mean, minus 2, that's, that's, not, that's over here. So this point is 2, 4. So we want to integrate from 0 to 2 x squared. So that's x cubed over 3 from 0 to 2, or, yeah, I knew that number came up. So that's the area of the whole thing, right? So we want. Is there any other x squared? That's just, just you just did the area under the curve. Oh, x you're squared. right. Goodness. Okay. Well, it's the difference between 
right? It's eight minus this, right? That's what I really want. Twenty-four minus eight is sixteen thirds. Okay, so that's this whole area. Oh, I got to be careful next time. Okay, so uh, let's take this area here. This is b minus x squared, right? b, and this is x squared, so it's the difference. We want to integrate that from 0 to this point, right? Well, we know the y is b, so the x has to be square root of b. dx. And we want that to be 16 thirds. So we need a little more space. Wouldn't we want it to be 8 thirds since so this would be half the total area? Hmm? Do we want it to be 8 thirds since so half? Yes, thank you. That would be good if we just left it that way. I'd end up finding it was two, right? It's like the whole it, or, or B is four. But thank you for saving me the trouble. Okay, let me uh, zero square root of B, B minus x squared dx equals eight thirds. That means that bx minus x cubed over 3 from 0 to the square root of b must equal 8 thirds. So plugging in, we have b square root of b minus square root of b cubed over 3 minus 0. Right? This all makes this 0. So this is 2 thirds square root of b cubed, so that's right, a little nicer, b to the 3 halves equals 8 thirds, or b to the 3 halves equals 4, or b equals 4 to the 2 thirds, which is not a nice number. Uh, the cube root of 16 is 2 times the cube root of 2. Hope you all like dancing around that algebra. All right, any other homework? Okay. Uh, we're going to to uh, kind of shift what my original plan. Uh, makes it really clear there will be no volume problems on the midterm. Uh, this is a uh, review sheet. Um, it just says it would be good if you know how to do these things for the midterm. It's, uh, you can make a paper airplane out of it if you want, because it's online. You can go to my website and find it and use it. Uh, we can discuss this. Or,
There's questions about that sheet I just passed out. No longer a cop. There it is. Some of this stuff, when I was writing it down, I thought, I didn't, make, I didn't say that very well, but... So, if, I won't feel bad if you tell me... What? Yeah, the trend. Just saying, maybe you wait for that. Is everybody okay with this? Mm -hmm. Yes. You have uh, the worksheets online, right? Like all the stuff that we've done so far? Okay. All there, yes. So you can review it if you lost something. Yes? We're going to go over volumes and parallel cross sections today. Uh, yeah. No. We'll do that. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. If I give you something along those lines. It'll be so easy. Of course, I did that last quarter. I, I, we were doing polar coordinates. Does anybody here not, like when I say polar coordinates, does anyone not know what I mean? Okay. Does anyone not feel like really confident? Okay. Probably one of the few honest people here. So I said, ah, I don't think this is such a big deal. I'll give him a, I'll give him a gift. And I said, I said, graph this. Draw a graph of this in polar coordinates. And at least a quarter of the people just know. <laughs> Does anyone know what this is the graph of? It's a circle with radius four. four. Okay. So I, I, I'll be a little careful. <laughs> Say I'm going to give you an easy volume problem, but maybe I won't give you one at all. Maybe I'll save that for the next quiz. That's okay. Yeah, it's probably a good idea, isn't it? Save the volume problem for the next quiz. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, we have a whole new section to do. I'm going to give everybody a break for a few minutes. And then we'll, we'll look at the volume stuff. Uh, you know, uh, let me suggest you not worry about the volume homework until after the midterm? Until after you felt like you were ready for the quiz, for the, for the midterm. Uh, so is there homework due on Tuesday, or are we going to That's what I'm saying. Thursday? Don't worry about okay, turning cool. it on Tuesday. So take a break, maybe five minutes, and then we'll take a look at volume. Homework.
So so Brandon and Christina will not know. So if any of you are friends of theirs, you can tell them that there won't be any won't be any volume. Or they can watch the video. There's technical more bars. <laughs> Things go wrong. Like the time I forgot the camera in class, and then the battery died. Except it wasn't the battery. It was the charging mechanism in the camera died. I didn't know that until I bought a new battery. I had to buy a charger. That's what weeks go by. So when Catherine and uh, Muhammad get back, we'll, we'll get going. I'm going to try and draw, make some drawings here.
still waiting for Somebody else. Oh, Flavi. Justifications. Um, let's just take a look at uh, something with parallel sides here. So, uh, the volume here is just uh, height times length times width, or length times width times height. Uh, Think about this is width times length times height here is the area of the surface, and you could kind of break this down into little slabs, if you like. Uh, let's call these dx for the sake of argument, and you could you could cut it into pieces and break it up and. It would all add together to the volume. Uh, there's no real mystery there. But the point is, you take an area and you multiply it along this third axis that shows up. And it turns out if you take now, here we have a cylinder. have the same kind of idea, you have uh, the ends, you have a, an area, which is uh, pi r squared, and uh, you know, usually, usually we turn this up right and call this a height, so why don't I do that? And then the volume would be the area times this height, h pi r squared. And you can also think of this as being sliced up into little thin pieces, each of which has some length, which of course adds to h. But the area is fixed. So it's nothing, nothing really fancy here. Um, we, we can go a little further and we can say, you know, if we have some weird shaped object, but the cross sections are all the same. Well, you could break it up into little pieces. You can see that each, you know, little dx, delta x here, the a area times the delta x along here is the volume of this slab, and then you add them all together, and you just get that the, the volume is the area times this, uh, volume is the area times the length. Now, what happens if, you know, in this diagram, I, I have this strange little shape, but that shape is now increasing in size. Well, now, 
Now what I was doing before with the little cross sections makes a little more sense. I, I take this area and I take its delta x, and then the next one has a little bigger area and a bigger area, and I add up all these little, little volumes, and I get the volume of the whole thing. Uh, I start to make the slabs thinner and thinner, you know, I have my little meat slicer and I just you know, cut the slices thinner and thinner. And this should look a lot like that Riemann integral we talked about when you're in the area. Uh, and uh, this suggests a method, one method for finding volume known as the method of parallel cross-sections. Uh, the idea is I have a volume, and it's made up of some kind of cross-section, and I have an area function, area x1, area x2, area x3, and I integrate that area function across, you know, the length of this. And that is my volume. Uh, this is a really, really powerful method. Uh, it depends on us being able to find the right area function. And obviously, we have to be able to uh, describe it as a function of x. So let's take a let's take a look at a very simple simple example. An example we've we've, uh, we've run into before. Uh, Let's take a look at something maybe you wondered where it came from. The volume of the sphere. Anyone recall what the volume of the sphere is? Four thirds pi r cubed. Four thirds pi r cubed. We don't really know where that comes from, do we? Anyone know? We have a class where someone said. You know, in geometry. Like the integral of the area? No, no, before calculus. Oh. In the past. <laughs> okay, let's let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, so uh, we're gonna center our sphere, you know, at zero. It's gonna make things simple. And we want to look at these little cross sections which of course are circles, right? Until you get to the very end, it's a circle, and if you get to the end, it's a point. So let's, let's look at one of those circles. And well, actually we're we're looking at the cross section here. So the circles are going to look like kind of straight lines, right? If you turn it sideways, you can see a circle. So at some x here, you know the radius here is r. And so the radius of this little circle here is Pythagorean theorem tells us it's r squared minus x squared. So the area of this circle is pi r squared, so it's pi times r squared minus x squared. Uh, capital R being, the, of course, the radius of the sphere, the big sphere, not the circle. And then, again, using this idea of uh, parallel cross sections, we want to integrate from one side to the other. Right? We want to integrate from negative r 
to r. Well, this is our area, right? Area of x. So we just plug in pi times r squared minus x squared dx. Now there's a shortcut here. Does anybody see the shortcut? It's kind of a small shortcut. What kind of function is this? Even function, right? And we're going from minus r to r on an even function. So we can really just go from 0 to r and multiply it by 2. Okay. Uh, I can't move this board. I'm going to uh, I'll put it back up as soon as we're done. So I just uh, so two times the integral from zero to r. I'll take the pi out also. R squared minus <laughs> x squared dx is just 2 pi r squared x minus x cubed over 3, 0 to r. So it's that 2 pi r cubed minus r cubed over 3 minus 0 minus 0. So that's 2 pi times 2 thirds r cubed, and we get 4 pi to 3 r cubed. Wow, now we can do that stuff. It wasn't even that hard. All right? Any questions about that? The tricky part, of course, is to find that area function, right? Well, this area function, 2 pi capital R squared minus x squared. If we can do that, we can, we're golden. Let me know when I can erase this. I also have my notes on the line too, so oh, okay. I can still look at those. So, uh, okay, uh, talking about you okay now. <laughs> Talking about kind of classical shapes, let's uh, think for a minute about a cone. Right? A cone has a circular base with a radius. The area of the base is pi uh, r squared, and it has a height. And the volume is. Anyone remember? Height times <coughs> squared by <coughs> two, three. Again, a mystery number. We don't know where that comes from exactly. It's the 
same as the pyramid. But, all right, uh, the way we're going to set this up is we're going to put our cone with its center axis along the x axis, and then the cross sections are circles, right? And we want to know what, to find the area, we know the area of those circles is going to, of course, be pi r squared. But uh, how do we find that little r? Well, uh, we're going to use l here instead of h. It's kind of on its side. And we use a big R for the radius of the base. Then we have to remember a little geometry. We have to remember that this ratio of R over L is going to be equal to, because these are similar triangles, it's going to be a little R over X. Because we have a big triangle and we have a similar little triangle. It's going to vary with x, right? And we always have this relationship. So we know our little r is just going to be x big r big l. So our area function is just going to be pi times this squared, x squared r squared over l squared. Now, what do we want to, where do we want to integrate? I'm going to integrate zero, where our area is zero, to L, where our area is the maximum. We want to integrate that area function pi x squared, r squared, over l squared, x. And of course, I've got a lot of constants here. I should take those out. Pi r squared over l squared, x squared. Okay? So that's just pi r squared over l squared, x cubed over 3, 0 to L, and that just becomes pi r squared, L squared, L cubed over 3, minus 0. And we, we get to uh, simplify here, and we're just going to get pi r squared times L, so, uh, you know, the calculus was, they didn't come up with calculus till 16, 1700s. The Greeks, Euclid knew this formula, he just didn't have quite as easy time of producing this formula. Okay, uh, but we, we clearly have a really powerful method here, and we can we can do much fancier things with it. So, uh, are you okay so far with this? You have the basic basic idea. This we take these areas, this area function, integrate it. You get a volume. Uh, let's uh, let's take a, a different function. Let's take uh, y equals square root of x. And uh, we're going we're gonna to do a trick with it. 
We're going to take it and we're going to spin it around the x-axis. So we're going to end up with kind of a bullet shape. And we're going to pick some point here, some, we'll call it P. No, we're going to call it H. So that's what I did in my notes. And we want to know the volume of this bullet as it goes from 0 to H. Nose cone. Okay, so again, what we want to do is we need this area function. Uh, we need to know this radius. Find that area function. Well, it's the square root of x, right? So the area is just pi r squared. Now we're going to integrate from 0 to our point P, our area function, pi x. And this one's pretty easy. It's just pi squared over 2, 0 to P. So again, it's just pi P squared over 2. All right, you can calculate all sorts of good stuff this way. Um, what's P? Hmm? What's P? Just some value on the on oh P. I said I was going to change it to H. x-axis, but you don't have to do that. If I had a function, we're going we're gonna to say f of x equals x cubed. And we could just as well spin this around the y-axis. This is kind of a different shape, nose cone or bullet. Uh, particular problem from the book wants, wants us to find the uh, distance from here up to y equals 8. So now we're going to integrate along the y-axis from 0 to 8 of the area. So now we need to figure out the area of one of these circles. Which is to say we want to know what the, what the radius is. Well, the radius is an x, right? So we have y equals x cubed. So as a function of function of y, x is the cube root of y. Sorry. My area function in terms of y. Well, that's the radius, right? The area is pi r squared, so it's pi times cube root of y squared, or y to the two-thirds. So that's going to be our integral here. 0 to 8 by y to the two-thirds dy. And there's nothing special about, you can see there's nothing special about integrating along x. You can just do it along y. Uh, 
uh, what do we get here? Y times Y to the 5 thirds, so 5 thirds from 0 to 8. So that's just going to be 5 times, if we plug in 8 here, it's 32 over 5 thirds, which is 3 fifths minus 0. So we just get 96 over 5 pi. And that's our volume up to 8. So that's another strategy. Um, if, if it's more convenient, you want to go along the y axis. Question. Sure. Is that supposed to be absolute value for your original equation? Because it's all, it's like the diagram you view is always positive. I'm not sure what your question is. It, would it be something like, well, what if it was down here, right? Well, I assume that would this be a negative volume? Is that is that kind of the well, no, because I mean, if you have x cubed, I thought that it was shaped, you know, like, a, or you like it when x is. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, oh, good, good question. Okay. So. Uh, Let me, let, me, let me redraw the, the diagram so your question is really clear. So what you're saying correctly is that if I graph y equals x cubed, it looks like this. Right. But this specific problem wants me to do the following. It wants me to spin the entire thing around the y-axis. Okay. and find the volume from 0 up to 8. So then you just don't care about the bottom part. That's right. That's this particular problem. The one on the, you know, the midterm will be impossible. So. No, oh, oh, that's right. I'm not going to put one there. Uh, OK. Um, there's one more of these problems that's a little trickier. Just a little trickier than all the rest. Uh, it's not much trickier. Uh, this is a great opportunity for those of you who like to visualize three things in three dimensions to exercise your ability to do that. Uh, and those who don't like doing it, you have my sympathy. So what we want to do is we're going to take two functions now, y equals x and y equals x squared. So there's y equals x, y equals x squared. And I'm going to take this area between them. We've done that before. But now what I want to do is I want to spin that area around. See, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really drawing this stuff, so maybe I shouldn't. Uh, what this is going to look like is on the outside, it's going to be that kind of bullet shaped. On the inside, because this is a uh, y equals x, it's going to be like a cone. I've uh, extracted out of it. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, sorry. This problem's just a little bit different than I described it. Instead, <laughs> this problem they want me to sorry, spin it around the x-axis. So on the outside, it's a cone. On the inside, it kind of is thicker in the middle, and then it goes to zero. <coughs> so again, 
the air the 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 issue here is uh, long y. What is the area? And what I want you to do is somewhere along the inside here, I want you to take a look and realize that what I have is a ring, or as they like to say in the book, a washer. And this inside radius is part of this function. The outside radius is this function. Actually, I, I don't know why they say ring, they say washer. There's a mathematical term for this. Does anyone know what the mathematical term for this shape is? Cylindrical cell. <laughs> Cylindrical cell. No, but, um, but a good guess. This is called an annulus. I don't know who gave it that name. Good technical term. So, okay. Um, Well, this has limits. We can see it's one of the limits is going to be zero, but what's the other limit? Well, let's find out where these intersect. We've done this before. We just set x equal to x squared, or x squared minus x is zero, and we can see immediately that this is going to go from zero to one. Zero to one. Uh, our area function. Now our area is this outer area, which is defined by this function, phi x squared. And then we want to subtract the inner area. We're going to point along here, which is defined by this function is pi x squared squared. So that's just going to become 0 to 1. We got our pi squared minus x to the fourth. The x is going to be x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4. 0 to 1. X to the fifth over 5. Oh, thank you. So that's just pi times 1 third minus 1 fifth. <coughs> 2 fifteenths. And the rest is 0. Okay, so those, those are, you know, we can do rings and washers and nose cones. I know you would all be disappointed to find out that I didn't have something to work on. Give this a try.
case you're wondering, if you come in on uh, next Tuesday and you still have some questions on this or other problems, we certainly could spend a little bit of time in the beginning. For the how, um, how many questions? Hmm? Yes. Is it be? Hmm? How many questions? Like... Oh, on the midterm? Yeah. Well, uh. it's unknown. More than one, definitely. <laughs> uh, less than ten. Less than ten? Yeah, that's, wow. that's kind of a wide range, isn't it? How about two? Hmm? How about two? What about two? Do you really want to do that? Yes. Yeah. 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 I suppose you could probably <coughs> like a million dollars to make it two. <coughs> but if I get one wrong, then and, it's so and then after I go, oh yeah, okay, then you could like say, well, how about fifty cents? And and I could say, what? You think I cheat? And you could say, you already think I could be bribed? And say we've already established that. But now we're just trying to get the right price. Um, I imagine like six. I'm guessing. Like a quiz, basically. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, I guess my quizzes are too much like tests, and my tests are too much like quizzes. Don't expect that. <coughs> Finally, you have like two plus hours. So. Wait, how many hours do we have? Wait, we have two hours here, right? Yeah, but I'm not going to spend the whole class on it. Oh, okay. Unless you need it. Probably will. Are we allowed to have notes on the picture? Like the sheet um, of notes? I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring in the uh, the sheet. So we also have our own sheet. Yes. I'm gonna pass these out. This is that copy of the stuff in the back of the book. I, I recognize that something on it didn't copy as well as I'd have liked. But you're free to ask me if something you can't read something on here. I'm, I would go to the original and find it. Uh, yes, you can have a page, okay. front and back, written in minuscule. Type it up as a minimizer. Yeah. You can do that. <laughs> microfiche it, microfiche the entire book into. <laughs> Like I wouldn't be giving a very good exam if you could just look up the answer in the book, would I? You should know how to use a book. It shows how we know how to use a book. Yeah, I mean, like if you go out and get a job as a mathematician, you think they'll say, no books. No books doing this research. That would be very hard. Hmm? That would be very hard. That would be very hard, yes. Well, it would just be silly. Yeah. You have to pull the laptop. You have to pull the laptop. No laptops. Oh, no. You can use a computer. And no fun. You can't have fun while doing math, can you? What do you mean to like,
I guess we're gonna we're gonna go over this stuff either late Tuesday or maybe even Thursday. So I thought I'd show you an interesting problem. Uh, in the next few minutes, uh, take uh, take the function one over x. Spin it around the x axis. Oh, yeah. And uh, you want to kind of cut it off at one. And so you get kind of a cone. And you want to know what the volume in that cone is. It's finite? Hmm? It's finite? Yeah, it is. If you take it from one to many, it is. Sorry? Oh, is this in this final? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna integrate this area function from one to infinity. The area is pi times one over x squared, right? So it's pi over x squared dx. So that's uh, this is an improper integral, right? So that becomes the limit. As a approaches infinity of pi times square root of a and one over x squared dx, so it's the limit pi times what is this negative one over x from zero to a. This clearly goes to zero, so we're, I guess if you look at the absolute value, we get pi. So that's the volume of this. So if, let's say uh, we had one of these tubes and we had some paint, we'll just fill it up <coughs> with our pi cubic whatever paint. But here's where it gets interesting. What if instead of the volume, I, I wanted the surface area? Well, if you look at it this way, the surface area 
is just, oh, this is the 1 over x. So the circumference around here is 2 pi times 1 over x, 2 pi times the radius, right? Times our little dx, right? So if I integrate that, what happens? I get from 1 to infinity 2 pi over x dx, which again is improper. We need to limit as uh, a approaches infinity 1 to a of 2 pi over x dx, which is the limit as a approaches infinity of 2 pi times the log of x, 1 to a, just the limit as a approaches infinity of 2 pi log of a minus log 1 to 0. And what does that go to? Infinity. Infinity. So here we have this strange object that has a finite volume and its area is infinite. So you could fill it with paint, but if you tried to paint it, you wouldn't have enough. You now, that's just one of my favorite calculus problems. It's just uh, think about that for how. I mean, it's math, so math can be strange. But there are no tubes like that that go off to infinity and have finite volume, except kind of in your mind. I guess. So. All right. Um, any questions on the, the problems we just worked on right now? Okay. Please bring that in with you on Tuesday and Thursday. We'll go we'll over them after the midterm. Um, Good luck on that. Um, if you have any last minute panic questions, you can always email me or bring me in. Okay. So I will I will definitely get this homework back to you in time for you to ask a question about it. Or the,